Hello friends, welcome back to another episode. Uh, today we have Flaunt Magazine number 180 and the theme of this magazine is called Phone a Friend, right? So you can see here there's a play on, on Batman. But again, so you're going, you're going to see telephones repeated throughout the magazine in the editorials. Now, of course, not in the uh, advertisements per se but surely in the uh, editorials so let's get started oh and by the way this is a wonderful magazine it's pretty thick too so I'm going to make a standalone episode on how Harper's Bazaar and Vogue are being crushed by five magazines and they, they have uh, really overtaken these five have overtaken Harper's Bazaar and Vogue as the flagship fashion magazines and again I'll do that as a standalone episode so here we have the first one right this inset you see here the old payphone out in the middle of nowhere that's kind of cool okay the reason I'm including Prada here is if you remember I last left off approximately and it's at least been two years through the pandemic I haven't been buying the magazines. The magazines have been, uh, you know, the, the eight large ones. We've been through this before. The four under Hearst and the four under uh, Condé Nast. They've been pretty dreadful these last two years. So since my point is the last time I looked in, Prada was at the top of its game. It was really hitting home runs. And they've slipped quite a bit. I mean, they're, this is really thick cardstock. But, right, the... The photos aren't what they used to be at Prada. And here we're having, look at the model's hair. She's not made up hardly at all. And I, I just don't get it. This is normally what you would see from uh, Celine and some other kind of bottom of the barrel advertisers. And this is very unusual for Prada to have fallen. That look at her. I mean, she's no makeup, no no attention whatsoever has been given to her hair. It's really dreadful. Here's Gucci. Gucci is starting to improve. The last, again, I'm, I'm going back two years, Gucci was in a deep rut. They had, it had really lost its way. And this is, you know, an improvement for, for whatever that's worth. And again, we, we talk about an image very quickly bringing something back right so I'll give you a second to study this and it should evoke a memory of something right and that would be studio 54 in New York kinda has that vibe going on even the it looks like a period piece to a certain extent this would be the late 70s when studio 54 was at its zenith okay when I saw this too, if you can, if you can look at this photo here and it again evoking something, a music video. I'm thinking of a music video, right? And this would have been kind of has that same playful theme as Rita Ora. How we do? If you want to search that and watch that video, it's really quite an awesome video. But my point is, as soon as I saw this, bam, Rita Ora. How we do? Okay, Dior, this is pretty, this is pretty good. Again, we're getting back to a medium format sensor. These images are way too clean. The glass, right, the, the sense of space in the photo. They're using a very high-end medium format camera to take these photos. And it looks wonderful. So another thing I'm noticing is for this issue where the fashion world is leaning back toward the late 60s and early 70s with this look right it was kind of in style again from the late maybe 65 to 72 73 somewhere and there was about maybe an eight year run where this was really fashionable and again it started in london the mod scene kind of with uh Actually, this is even more than the mod scene. This is kind of more of the hippie time frame. 
right? We're getting back to David Bailey and Gene Shrimpton and Twiggy in the London scene. But here, right, you can almost envision this as a peace sign during the Vietnam War, right? You had Vietnam protesters, and they're kind of, right, it kind of evokes the peace sign. So this is really not so much this, but this for sure, it's late 60s, early 70s. Yeah, that's raunchy. When when a woman does that, that's really not sexy at all. That's actually just raunch, and it's it's uh it's beneath, it's beneath. But it isn't beneath Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent, if you remember, they were on this run of rooftop rooftops, and that was their theme there for a while was rooftop photography, and this, right? It's that's nasty. That's just raunchy. Doing that is never sexy. Fendi is also among the best advertisers, and this is wonderful, and you can tell here. Now, I said before in the other photo, that was a throwback to the late 60s, and you can tell here, this would be a throwback. I'm looking at the different models and how they're dressed. This would be about 75 through 79. Okay, this is definitely a period piece. Fendi is bringing back some, some clothes from the latter half of the 1970s again. We're getting back from about 75 to 79, and it's really beautifully done. Even the hairstyles are accurate to the time period. So the fashion editor who put this shoot together really did a magnificent job assembling the clothing, right? This is, I'm sure, a new line from Fendi. They're doing a 1970s line, and they got them hair and makeup artist to do accurate hair from the time period. Right, the clothing, everything is in agreement. This is a masterpiece. This is really wonderfully done. Okay, same thing. Late 70s. Fan out of frame, right? There's a fan, right, blowing and making this skirt billow a little bit. And it's really well done. And it seems like there's two different fans, too. They have a fan. Well, let's see. Yeah, they have one. It looks like it's out of frame here, and it's very channelized, right? And it looks like it's blowing her hair this way, and there's a f another fan lower in this direction blowing this way, right? And you have these opposing opposing movements of wind, and it's, it's just well done. Fendi, again, I'm repeating myself, but Fendi is really among the top tier advertisers and they've always been they haven't they haven't lost their touch this is nice by the way this is going to be a two-parter okay because there's so many wonderful photos in here there's no way i can get it done in 30 minutes so i'm gonna have to make a part two here we have zendaya who continues to mature you know, I, I said this before, there are, I can think of maybe three uh, actresses or singers or whatever, celebrities who, who crossed over into modeling, and they could have been awesome if they would have just gone the modeling route, and that's Zendaya, and earlier was Scarlett Johansson, she kind of dipped her toe in the modeling world, and Margot Robbie, she, she did Margot Robbie is, is among the very best. She's so multi-dimensional, multi and same as with Zendaya. She can act, she can dance, she can model. Taylor Swift is a fourth one. Taylor Swift, as a matter of fact, I saw two Victoria fashion, was it Victoria's Secret fashion shows? And Taylor Swift did it, I think, twice. And Taylor Swift actually looked better than the models. I mean, she was... She looked awesome, and then, you know, she was the performing act. So again, I should say those four, Margot Robbie, Scarlett Johansson, Taylor Swift, and Zendaya were wonderful crossover models. Okay, Mew Mew, this is really, this is quite bad. Well, that's horrible. You have, the, the skirt is cut so short that the pockets... Are showing right that's that's horrible you've got this kind of 17th century shoe 18th century 
very pointed shoe and this looks horrible the photography look it's a very harsh light the, the light on her is harsh and it's casting a very defined harsh shadow this is overexposed by about mm, maybe a half stop two-thirds of a stop okay it's just horrible Mew Mews, they used to be better than this. They, like Prada, they've fallen. And this is one whose uh, Valentino has vastly improved. Okay, you know, it's, it's, it's cool about these magazines. They, they, some of these advertisers get better, and some of these advertisers get worse. And Valentino was really pretty bad for a while, and, and they've gotten much better. This is Zendaya again. This is wonderful. The only thing I don't like is this blue. You right. You have these Roman sandals. They're coming up high. The bag and this kind of flowing cape, right? And you have this. It almost looks like in the villages of New York, right? The East Village, Greenwich Village, or whatever. Kind of has that vibe. She's in one of the villages of Manhattan, right? Over here. But this blue is clashing. Uh, this blue and red isn't working together. I don't know. Okay, this is this is pretty dreadful here too. This model has been in the game for a long time, and she's kind of one-dimensional. She only has this look. And she wears her hair the same way. It's always cut at about the same length. It's right, and it's just I don't know. It just she reminds me a lot of Cara Delevingne. Cara Delevingne is the in singularity the most one-dimensional model there is. And this woman, again, and I don't mean to be unkind to her, but I, I, every photograph I see her in, she, there's, she has no dimension. There's, it's the same look in every single thing she does. Versace, this looks wonderful. Now, what's crazy about this photo, now, we've seen 60s. We saw the 70s. Now, this is clearly a 1980s influence with all these bright, popping colors. Right, this is, if you remember Cindy Lauper, early 80s, this kind of has, even glam bands, if you remember hair metal, Motley Crue and Warren and Skid Row, right, this kind of has that glam band, hair band look of the, you know, 1983 to 89, it collapsed in 90 when grunge, grunge just replaced the hair bands in 1990, so this was about a, you know, inclusive, it was about a seven or eight year run again from about 83 to 90, right? And then again, even with women, the styles changed from this really loud, vibrant colors. And if you remember that Seattle look where grunge kind of originated, they started, people started wearing flannels and in those baggy jeans and they were too long, right? And people would step on the cuff. And it was just a horrible look. I don't know what happened, but... I really miss this time frame because, you know, even the, the, we always talk about mental health, state of mind. This was a very cheerful and optimistic time. Grunge took over, Kurt Cobain in that scene, right? Nirvana, 1990, and everything just turned dark. Every, the music turned dark, the clothing was, right? And people's mindsets, it was, anyways, that's, that's the power of photography, what it can evoke. This is wonderful. This is Gigi and Bella Hadid, their sisters. But anyways, this Versace, this look at this, bam! Look at the vibrance, saturation of these colors. It's beautiful. Okay, Max Mira. This is cool. Kind of like this. Got a nice look. These tube tops. I kind of like you know. It's all monochrome. There's no color accents. It's all monochrome, right? Even the glasses are in agreement with the clothing. So they went, everything is monochrome and it looks really wonderful. Chloe, this is kind of cool. Shot on a sand dune. I like this. This is an unconventional kind of photo. Different. One that's really captured well. Artistic. Here we have Kaya Gerber. I haven't seen her. Right in a few years, and you can tell she's begin. She's continuing to mature. 
her face is changing because she was so young when she entered the industry about four years ago. She was 18, I believe. So that would make her about 22 now. And you can tell she still kind of has a baby face, but it's still her face is changing even from, because when you're that young, your face is still evolving, it's still changing. Todd, now this was another one that used to be horrible. It was Todd, Celine, and what was the other one? Uh, Valentino was pretty horrible. But anyways, my point is, Todd's has really come a long way. Their photography and their, their advertisements, they have come up a lot. So congratulations to Todd's. Here we have a Vespa scooter, right? And this is kind of cool, no sock look, right? That's kind of cool looking. Just really, and the colors too. Look at the agreement in the colors. We have this kind of like a jade, and it's matching the skirt and this gentleman's shirt, right? Like almost like a khaki. The browns, this this whole advertising, right? The both pages are in agreement. Now, of course, it's not monochrome, but my point is the the complementary colors. They're all within the same family, and everything is kind of agreeing here. There's no clash anywhere in this photo okay I can do without this what to do with this butt cheek hanging out okay that's that's not doing anything for me <laughs> especially in this lady's boot you know it's like okay come on this is pretty cool I like this this is kind of like you know there's a certain genre of architect architecture called brutalist right brutalist architecture and it's really, it's really popular in Germany, right? Because you know how the Germans are. They're just, <laughs> I don't even need to go there about the Germans. They're just, they just, they do their thing, right? So here, <laughs> right, it's, it's, right, it, it almost screams brutalist, you know, this brutalist art movement in Germany. This is cool. This is kind of like a negative in photography, right? Because if you develop your own film, right, this is this would be the negative, and you turn it into a the negative. You turn it into a positive. Okay, so this would be this is so cool. This would be like again, it's a it's a negative. Really nicely done. And we talked about this before, Bruno Mali. This I love this skirt. This looks like a. Now, I'm not, I don't like, I, again, I'm, this is, I rarely get political, right? Very rarely. But this almost looks like a calfskin because it's not marred in any way. And what they do, and I think it's mostly they come from Europe because Americans, we, you know, we use the uh, barbed wire and it, it, and it scars. The cows get caught in the barbed wire and it literally tears their skin and it makes a leather that's unusable. But more in Europe, they don't use barbed wire and therefore the leather coming from Europe it's it's unmarred right it's not blemished from getting cut by the barbed wire but it, to me what I, my point was I don't like the slaughter of young animals like I'm, I really just don't believe in, in veal and lamb because those are those animals sometimes they're not even weaned when they're slaughtered and it's just a really a quite a crime to me and this looks like it's so perfect. It looks like a calf skin where they've slaughtered a, a calf and used the skin. Or maybe it's a little bit too big to be a calf, but I think you get the point where it's so unblemished, you'd figure it have to come from it would have to come from a calf to be that unblemished. And that again that's where sometimes high fashion kind of runs afoul of some ethics, right? You gotta really question the ethics of how they treat these animals and if they're taking them to slaughter too young okay I don't know why I marked this one we got a little bit of a gel thing it looks there's kind of a very light pinkish hue running across this photo and it might have been photographed through a very very slight pink gel right a very minimal gel or the tint not color temperature, but tint. If you if you notice, if you ever, if you're in Photoshop or Lightroom, if you take the tint slider and you pull it left, I believe it goes green, 
right the further left you go it goes green and the, if you take it from a center or a zero and you start just if you just touch it it'll do this you'll start to get the very slightest slightest hint of pink and that's just from a very slight bump right and you so it's either shot through a gel or just the tiniest little bump of the tint to the right to produce this pink okay and I wanted to give I wanted to give a shout out here to these people who run this magazine because this is really a tremendous magazine and again I tell you in full disclosure I'm not compensated I'm not paid I get no free merchandise I get absolutely nothing so please I ask you respectfully please don't accuse me of, of these I'm um, sneaking paid promotions in here because I do not okay um, I just hit my boom arm. Matthew Bedard is the editor-in-chief. Creative director is Jim Turner. And it's just really well done. This magazine is extremely well done. So shout out to the people who run the magazine. This is cool. I like this shot here. Just a beautiful color. This, right? Sometimes these whiskeys and stuff. These, these liquors, it's the most beautiful color. Here we're getting back to that telephone theme, old rotary phone. Okay, this is ghastly here. So if you can tell, if you've ever worked in Photoshop, well, I think it's in Lightroom as well. But if you can, I'll give, let me move my hand. And what that is, that's the, if you can, if there's one thing they've adjusted, Right, if you look at it, it's the sharpening. So they've taken the sharpening slider and just ungodly jammed it to the right and over sharpened this photo and it's horrible. That's horrible. Again, we're getting back to this kind of negative look, right? It would almost look like something, you know, like a triax or whatever when you get this kind of a look obviously black and white when I saw this this is so cool here this image on the left because that's what it looks like near Manila by the airport you'll see a huge series of shanty towns near Ninoy Aquino International Airport in Manila the shanty towns look exactly like this they're buildings that are just there's kind of no zoning right they're just haphazard I shouldn't say haphazardly but they're, they, they go up they go up and there's and this is what a shanty town looks like in Manila at different heights different widths sometimes they're literally built adjacent connected to another building and it's so cool because when you walk through a shanty town it's not like the Roman grid like a north south grid you got to do all this like family circus type stuff you know when you walk through these shanty towns to get to the street this is cool here this is beautiful here you have some boulevards I don't know what city this is but regardless of what city it is it's just it's just these two boulevards the way they kind of form this these are headlights of cars of course street lights Right, and this is some type of ancillary road here. But it's just wonderful. What a photo. Okay, we're getting back to the telephone. The old coin pay phones. That's kind of cool. There's still one. Right near where I live, there's a, there's a gas station that's been there for quite some time. And they still have one phone like this. Kind of in the back of the gas station right in the corner where like when you pull off the street and pull in there's it looks just like this there's still one now the the phone itself is not there any longer it's just the shell right but it looks like this so you still see those you know if if you're out and about keep your eye open for these old these old coin operated telephones that that pay phones there's they're still around and I'm including them here because they're really Right, they're part of history. They're part of our history before smartphones, of course, before uh, cell phones. And these are remnants of a day gone by, yesteryear. And look at it, it's beautiful. I mean, it's 
right? My gosh. It almost reminds me of a Banksy, right? You should you should be able to really literally cut these out. Cut these out of the ground, right? And then actually put them in Sotheby's or Christie's and, and auction them off. And same here. Literally cut out this wall. Cut this wall out. Right, not down to the bottom, especially if it's a load-bearing wall, you have to be careful, of course. But you get the point. If it's not a load-bearing wall, just cut it out. And you take that piece and send it to send it to an auction house, right? Now this here, I don't know who did Austin. Austin Lee. And let me let me share something with you, because I've been around, right, and by the grace of God kind of learned a little bit about humanity and I've learned a little bit about life now what's so cool these are artistic work artistic works by this Austin Lee but it doesn't say here explicitly but these are demonic images okay not so much these two but these two these really look and they, these demons are real right so again if if you're not a believer I understand that and I respect that but demons are very real they really exist and they're grotesque. They're, they're grotesque, humanoid-looking creatures, right? They have kind of human features, but grossly distorted. So this, well, my point is, this artist it doesn't state here explicitly that these are demonic images, but these are. These these are very assuredly demonic. So this artist has some knowledge of the demon world. And you can see here, this is kind of. Right, it's implied here that this is kind of satanic. This here too, this face, this is demonic. So this is kind of a walk, a walk through the dark side here. These are really cool images here. This is awesome, especially this image on the left. Let me see if it's cardstock. Well, it's kind of a medium grade, but this image is so awesome. This is another keeper cut it with an exacto knife you put that in a frame and bam that's you put that on your wall you could look at the text here it's so small it's, it's right it's not defacing the image in any way it's not detracting from the image so that's a that is definitely a keeper you can really frame that wonderful so thank you to Flaunt magazine for doing this for for putting these images in here that people can cut out and use as ad hoc posters. Getting back to the telephone motif, right? The theme. Here's another. Is that a typewriter or a phone? That's a typewriter. Okay, so it's some throwback stuff. Okay, that's a nice image. These pointy shoes. I've seen a lot of image images with these really pointed shoes. So those must be coming back as well. This is kind of cool, this this radius in the wall. That would be harder than heck to try to carpet or tile that or put some kind of a hardwood flooring, right, because of this radius. That would be a monster to try to, you know, as I've said, this is cool. An old typewriter, Royal. That was a real famous brand of typewriter back in the day. Okay. Hey, now I got a little trivia question for you, and I'm gonna keep you hanging until the end. Well, actually, I'll do it in the next video. But between the typewriter, typewriter, and the personal computer, there was something in between. There was a device in between. And without googling, without doing an internet search, can you remember what that device was that bridged, that bridged the typewriter to the PC or Apple or whatever, right? Modern computer. There was a device. That was big for maybe five, six, seven years, and again, it acted as the bridge. And see, see if you can recall what that was. And again, please don't search and cheat. Just try to remember. It's nice, very nice. I like this kind of calico, right? It has this kind of patchwork calico pattern. It looks really well done. But again, I just the, the thing I don't like about it. It's shot, it kind of has a nautical theme. Right, a shot at a swimming pool. You can see the like the life ring that you throw to somebody. This ring in case they're having trouble and they're drowning or whatever. So it's shot at a swimming pool, 
in a pool, any type of nautical thing. Like you'll see this a, a lot in uh, Ralph Lauren. Ralph Lauren loves to use blue and white. Okay, so this is this is an editorial. It's not an advertisement. Okay, but my point is, as much as I love these outfits, right? The, the, there's a clash in the theme of this nautical, right? This water, marine, blue and white, and where are they coming from with these browns and blacks? This is a, right. It was just shot at the wrong location, right? So my point is the theme. The dress should have been a variation of blue and white, right, to match this nautical theme here going on, this water theme, marine theme. I'm repeating myself, but I think you get the idea. Okay, I'm at 30 minutes. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up, a like, okay? I don't have a Patreon page. I've never asked for any money. I don't sell any merchandise. The only thing I ask of you is a thumbs up. That's all I ask, and I would really appreciate it if you can you know uh, just afford a simple thumbs up okay thank you and I will begin part two uh, right after this